Um, I have the pleasure of doing two things. One is I get to stand in for Susan Fader of the Mellon Foundation, who, if she was here, would be doing this introduction. But through the Mellon Foundation, I got to know an extraordinary set of colleagues um, who originally began, I, I, when, they, when I got to know them, they were working at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. And since then, they've moved to Emerson uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. But they're the colleagues who are behind Howl Round TV, which is how we are broadcasting this to, to um, uh, everyone who's at home. And they've also been some really important thought partners to me as I was handed the strategic plan for Art Place and told to sort of think about how to operationalize this. So I'm deeply indebted to David Dower and to Polly Carl, who are about to come up and lead us through the next session, just in terms of sort of um, opening up my eyes to a new way of thinking and helping me into a new way of working. So please join me in welcoming David Dower and Polly Carl from Arts Emerson and Howell Round. So, uh I'm not sure what uh, you thought was promised, but I had an idea once uh, the deputy mayor's guy was here that I would lead a yoga session. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be bad for everybody. Uh, Jamie had asked us to first start with a kind of icebreaker, and clearly because of the sort of lack of energy in the break, you guys really need that. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and start it just to give everybody, kind of mix it all up for everybody. Uh, for the next about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, we're, gonna, we're going to, we're going to, shape and reshape this room. We're going to do some creative placemaking in this room. Uh, and then we're going to go into a study of uh, what it is that we've done at HowlRound and how it might relate to the stuff that Jamie's just laid out. Very powerfully thought through. Uh, it's been really uh, an honor and uh, exciting for us to work with you, Jamie, as your thinking and, and Liz, as your thinking has grown uh, on this work that you're about to embark on. And we're very honored to be here to share what we've been doing in the hopes that it helps you guys think about how you are becoming uh, a community, a commons, if you will, of creative placemaking. Uh, so, uh, so we'll do a little bit of that, and then we'll have uh, time for uh, questions and answers. And uh, we're going to do some exercises in the middle that help you understand, actually get into the mechanics of what it is that we do. Uh, so we're going to begin by getting up. And before you do that, we're going to use that open spot of the room for a minute, and then we're going to use the whole room in a minute, and then we're going to go back to the open spot, and then we're going to go back to the whole room. Uh, <laughs> and so you're going to have to, like, Listen up. Uh, and then what we're gonna, the way we're going to end it is that we're going to end by grabbing chairs. And I'm gonna, we're going to break up into uh, groups of 11, I think, is the number that we need to use. We've got to get about 20 groups all together. So we're going to break up into 11 groups. And each group is going to take your chair to wherever it is you want to meet for your breakout and then come right back in here. And uh, we'll keep going with the session. So some of the, those groups can be in here. Some of the groups can be out in the lobby. Um, that's the last step, and I'll explain how it works when we get there. But you're going to want to follow along and follow closely. And, the, and for you who are watching at home, this part's going to make you very dizzy. You should just get up and run around your house for 25 minutes, OK? <laughs> Great. Uh, so before we get up, we're going to use that open square at the back as a map of the United States. And uh, let's say that uh, that's the East Coast. That uh, partition over there is actually uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, Midwest, North Mid Midwest, uh, over, uh, that's like, yeah, okay, that's going to be the best way. That's, that's the North Midwest, this is the South, this is the West Coast, and that's the East Coast, okay? So if you could just get up and go put yourselves on the map of the United States. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to use, can I get my mic? Can I get my mic, please? So we're going to use this whole area here, this big square. This big square is the, uh, is the map. The partition, that's the north. Middle north, that's the west coast. That's the east coast. Here's the south. There's the okay, southwest. The east coast. There's yeah, the like southeast. Yeah, we chose to sort of, oh, we're just doing east coast. Yeah, east coast, west coast, yeah. Not in our specific spots. So no. On the map. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just on my coast. Oh, yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Kentucky's right here. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah Carolyn. Yeah. Good to see you. Yes. Where are you? 
Only David can do this else? exercise because you have who to else be tall here? enough and long enough. Chicago, who else is here? Milwaukee, okay. You got it. Milwaukee, Chicago, well, now St. We're back Paul, to Minneapolis. Oh. Can't hear him. Who's here? Hello, Missouri. Welcome. You guys in the same project? You all know? Yes, you, okay, good. Where are you? All right, we're just introducing our coast. Great, welcome. Report also? He's going next. Right, we're we're going to okay, go into Bob. He's right. introducing himself. You, you see, I can it. see. So. There's some very precise we geographers here. Your here. Mic. Los Angeles, I take it? All right, you got it. Oh, the Pacific Northwest. All right. Pacific Northwest. Okay. Where are you? Oh, oh my God. It's Alaska over here. Look, we had to leave a little, little moat. <laughs> All right. Okay. Could I have your attention for a second? Could I have your attention for a second? Could I have your attention for a second? All right. Just take a look around the room now. I think everybody is where, anybody feel like you maybe didn't understand this map? <laughs> we got Alaska way over there. Is Hawaii in the room? No, I don't see Hawaii over there. Maybe we wouldn't be able to see them. Is this Florida over here? Yeah. Excellent. Chicago, Minneapolis, Milwaukee. <laughs> Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> okay. Missouri, Kentucky. Uh, there you go. Uh, wh who are you, where are you guys? Pittsburgh. Uh, and where are you guys? Detroit. Okay. All right. So take a look around the room. This is going to become important in this little exercise over the next 15 minutes. Look around this room and see who you don't already know in it. Look at this map and see who you don't already know in it. Look at your own community and see if there's anybody you don't yet know. And back to me. Back to me. <laughs> back to me, please. Thank you. All right. So for the next thing, I'm going to stand on a chair. <laughs> Jamie Bennett, there's no ice in this group, I just got to say. All right. If, if you, uh, hey, uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Paul, if you guys could come back to me. All right. For this next thing, we're going to use the whole room. And we're going to make a circle around the perimeter of the whole room. Could you guys pull those chairs either, make, a, make an alley there where people can get around the whole room in one circle. And this circle is based on length of time you have been at work in this field. Now, if I were to walk up to you not knowing you at all, if I were to walk up to you not knowing you at all, and I were to say to you, oh, how long have you been doing this? You would give me some number. That's as accurate as it needs to be. And that meet number can mean whatever you need it to mean. Doesn't have to be about your project. Doesn't have to be about the job you're in now. How long have you personally been at work, at, in this work? Do you have a question? Uh, <laughs> creative place making, I guess, in, in, in this conversation. If I walked up to you, uh, okay, so excuse me. How long have you been involved in the work that got you here today? Yeah. There you go. So your number's 20. Okay? So. <laughs> So, we're going to go around this circle here, and one year is at that partition, right at the back there, and it goes clockwise, the way I'm facing, it goes clockwise around the room, and it comes back to the longest practitioner who will stand right next to the shortest time pr practitioner, okay? So you have five minutes to organize a circle that's the, around this room with the number that's in your head. Let's say that that's... Zero, 10, 20, 30, 70. 30 is probably going to be about there. Can you turn my mic off? Five is probably section? over. Just, just. What number are you guys? What, what number would you give me? 27. I, th I think you would start over there by the screen and make your way from there. What number? I'm sorry, I don't understand where I'm 
So what number, if I were to... Four years. Four years. So one is up there, so you're going to be up in this group right here. Find, so you find somebody who's less than you and the person who's more than you, and you put yourself between them. <clears throat> okay. Let's tighten up this circle here. What, how many years are we at here? 30-ish. 30 30-ish, good. How many years are you at? So that's 30 there, so you want to keep going around there to get to the 18s, the 19s, and the 20s. The 18s, 19s, and 20s are probably in there. Hey, 30-ish, could you guys come this way, 30-ish? The 30s, these guys are 30s too. Keep coming this way. Keep the circle spreading that way. There you go. Keep it going clockwise. You're going to run out of room. What number are you? 30-ish? Yeah, 30-ish. 30-ish is all the way over here. Keep coming, 30-ish. What, what number are you? 40. What number are you? All right. This is it. 40 and 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. OK, great. Keep going. Keep going. So you probably want to keep coming, just because we're all bunched up there. Keep going that way. Keep going that way. Keep. What numbers are you? Uh, keep going that way. Yep. Twenties in the twenties. Keep it going around. In the twenties. Keep it going around. You want to keep going around and close that up. Close up that gap. Are you guys in the twenties also? Seventeen. Seventeen. Good. So if you could spread that one out so you're one line, that'd be great. How many? Look at this math. 15-ish? Is this all 15? 20 is, uh, but now it's probably, are you 20? Yeah, 20 is, Jamie's, Jamie Bennett's at 20. What, you're 15? Is this all 15? 12. 11, 12. 12. Yeah, uh, Rocco, why don't you go stand at year one? That way it won't look like you're at year 40. <laughs> all right. Huh? Yeah. All right. So, can I get you back for a second, please? Could I get you back? Can I get you back? Thank you. All right. So, take a look at the circle. Take a look at this, this circle. And why don't we give the 15s a break and spread it a little further along, you guys, and, and get a little more further up into this group. See how much room all the... All the um, the longest term experience people in the field take for themselves. Push them a little, push them a little. Those are all the big offices over there. Now, go ahead and push it, let's spread it out a little bit. What I want you to do is take just a minute and introduce yourself to somebody who's standing near you in this circle who you don't know yet. And take a minute, introduce yourself to someone you don't know. Anybody standing by themselves? Looks like everybody's got a conversation. Okay, I'm going to start to get you back now. If I can get you back now. If I could get you back now. 
If you can hear me, ask your people next to you to come back. Thank you. Did you find somebody you don't know? Great. Did you guys find somebody you don't know? Great. All right, if I could have you all back now. All right, so only two more to go. And if you hear me asking for people to come back, go ahead and let the people around you know that I'm asking for that, and that might shorten that part for us. Uh, I don't want to up the volume and blast you guys out. Uh, and uh, So there's two more. And for this one, I want you all to come back to the center of the room here, just stand in one big crowd. So let's get in this open part of the room here. And I want you to think about, I'm sure there will be questions about this one as well. I want you to think about the size community that you're doing your work in. And for those of you who are funders, uh, you might actually just want to observe this part of it or go with the community that you're based in. Either way is fine with me. Uh, you uh, take your own uh, path through that. But if you're working in a context with a million or more people, go to that corner. And you could go there now. It's, n it's a good corner. <laughs> <laughs> wow, such shame about urban centers. <laughs> that wasn't the point, but it surfaced, OK. Million is where all those people are headed. <clears throat> all the way over in that corner. Yeah, the size of, this, of the, the population where you are doing your work. I really mean the center, like the region in which your projects are located, but you could, you could decide. You could just, yeah. That's what I really mean? OK, so that's the million dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the million people. Sorry. Uh, if you are working in a, in a context that uh, involves a population of 500,000 people, go to that corner. Between 500 and a million, go to that corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to, go to the to go to the urban part of that, and then yeah, the the urban. All right. If you're in a context of between 250,000 people and 500,000 people, go to that corner over there, please. By the screen. That's a million, 500,000 to a million, 250,000 to 500,000. And then if you're in a context between, between 100,000 and 250,000, go to that corner over there. 100,000 and 250,000. And I want to break it down even a little more for you guys. If you're in, yeah, if you're in the context of between 50 and 100,000 people, go to this corner right over this come stand in a group right over here. And are, if you're in a context between 1 and 50, right over here. So this is, which one? You can walk around and introduce yourself to everybody. OK. So this is one. One second, you guys. Let's just take a look. Can we come back for a second? Major urban centers. All right. So take a look at what Art Place is already doing. What's that group? A million or more. 250 to 500. 500,000 to a million, back in that corner. And in this group? And in this group? <laughs> Under 50,000. So that's the distribution of the people in the room at this point in terms of where your projects are. OK, so now 
Last exercise. This is going to be a little harder. I want you to form the circle again where you're standing between two people you don't yet know. Start. <laughs> How am I doing for time? Am I doing all right for time? Keep going. Reform the circle, please. Can I get you guys to move along a little bit? I'm going to pull some other people in here. Can you guys kind of spread this out a little bit to, so we connect it as a circle? Can you guys spread this out a little bit so we connect it as a circle? Yeah. Okay, did we get there? All right. Okay, so come back. Come back to me. Come back to me, please. Come back to me, please. Thank you. Come back to me, please. Okay. All right, now this is the part where we have to, we have to all listen, because this is where now, you thought this was chaos. It's actually going to turn into actual chaos for just a moment, and then it will be resolved. Okay, these chairs, we need to leave these chairs alone, because we're all going to sit now and watch a, a presentation in a moment. But all of these chairs are the chairs I'm talking about when I tell you what I want you to do next. I'm going to take groups of 11 people, and those are going to be your breakout groups, and what you're going to do is you're going to grab a chair, and you as your group are going to decide where you want to do your breaking out. You'll get your number from Jamie or Liz, and you will make your circle for where you're going to go after the presentation for your breakout. You're going to go make it now so you all know where it is. And then you're going to come back in here and you're going to sit down. Questions? What? OK, good. <laughs> Thank you, because I'm sure like, at least half the room was thinking that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to do it right now. Where's one? You have one? All right. So uh, you guys put yourselves around people you didn't know, right, for the most part? OK. So I'm going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And you guys are one. Grab a chair. And you can, you're going to put that in a circle anywhere, either here or out on the um, veranda there. Each of you are going to bring your chair to the circle for number one. Mm -hmm. You're going to grab your, grab your chair and go. Ready? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Jamie, that's 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You all don't know each other already, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Number 3. Get your chairs and go wherever you want. So did three, somebody got 3 already? Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, and you're going group 5. You can make it wherever you want. Okay. Group 4, group 4. That group 4, sorry, they're group 4. You, got, you understand what I'm doing? Okay, I'm going to get it done in like lickety split. So start thinking about where you want your group to sit. 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Wait, I want, I want you guys to split up. You, you guys already know each other? Oh, no. no. Okay, good. Just started talking. Good. No, I'm not splitting you up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hi. Right. Ten and eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm going to break this group up. Ten and eleven. You're in the next group. 
<laughs> one, two, yeah, you're in that group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Hello, you're going in this group with a breakout. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thank you. So leave these chairs, but go get those chairs. Yeah, yeah, you're in. You're in this group. <laughs> Were you 11? No, he was Okay, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Are you in a group yet? No. 10, 11. So you're coming into this group here. And you're in this group here. Are you guys in groups yet? 1, 2, 3, Who's not, who doesn't have a group yet? Yeah. All right, 15, you guys are small for the moment because I'm gonna find the people who aren't uh, in groups yet. So take your 15 and let me know where you go. We'll take si we, 16 we self-organized over here, so in the back end. That's what happened, okay, 16 already. <laughs> oh. All right, <laughs> don't take it. All right. Anybody not have a breakout group? Anybody not have a breakout group? And then if once you're done, now you know where you're going to meet for the breakout, but come back to the center now. Come back to the theater seating now. Anybody not have a breakout group? Yeah, thank you. Are you, uh, lead your, yeah, leave the chairs. Le well, maybe they're gonna bring them back again. You can leave your chairs for your breakout group in place and go back and sit in the theater seating. Leave your number at your group spot and come back to the theater seating. So once you've got your spot, come back into the theater. Once you know where you're sitting, come back into the theater. You guys are, you guys are very, very well organized, but now we need you in there. And then you're going to come back here to, for your breakout. For number, when, we, when we do our breakout, number seven comes here. All right, thank you all. We're gonna go ahead and get started on this presentation part. <laughs> okay. Thank you for indulging us, we just wanted to make in some way that you could find them when it was time to get there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start. And if uh, people are still out in the hallway, perhaps somebody can let them know. Uh, thank you. How many of you were actually able to meet people that you didn't know coming in here? Pretty much everybody? Great. That was, that was part of the point. You're going to have lots of time to follow up on those conversations. I appreciate you all playing along. Uh, so. Jamie had asked us, uh, boy, second or third day that you were, second day, second day that uh, Jamie was in this job, he and Liz came to Boston uh, and mentioned the plans that uh, he had and, and he and Liz were formulating around this art place sunsetting notion and how uh, to rethink some of the basic assumptions under what art place was, at least in my mind, I was, I was surprised to hear Jamie's thinking about it and delighted. Uh, we have been for the last four years? Three years. Three, three years. years uh, working with myself, Polly Carl, uh, Vijay Matthew, who's on the camera, and where did Jamie Galoon go? Jamie Galoon back there. 
we're largely the staff of HowlRound and uh, the people who created it together. And we've been working in something of a conceptual vacuum for a lot of that time. Our goal was to try to create uh, what we call a head tilt uh, in the nonprofit theater of, uh, in this country uh, that would look at the resources of the nonprofit theater and think about them as, a, as the resources of a community rather than resources of individual institutions within that community. And look at the people, the actors in that field as a commons. Uh, and it's been a long road, conceptually, a lot of evolving of that thinking, and we're going to show you where we are today. And no doubt, with the work that Jamie's going to put you guys through in the coming years, uh, we're hoping that we'll learn a lot from, from Art Place as Art Place uh, tries to do what it's about to do um, in, its, in this new strategic plan. So we wanted to show you today some of what it is that HowlRound actually is, what it's become, and spend less time on where it came from. Happy to talk about that over drinks. Um, <laughs> this is the story to tell over drinks. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it's been a great journey, but, but it's really more important about how does what Jamie just laid out play out in a context like what we're doing at HowlRound. Our focus being the nonprofit American theater, yours being create, creative placemaking uh, in the US. Okay, so Polly, is, uh, Polly and I are gonna sort of tag team this part of the presentation, and Polly, if you wanna just kick it off. Is that, uh, that sounds enough great. of a setup? It's great, yep. I'm, I'm Polly Carl. Uh, and I just will say one thing. Uh, I'm standing in a ballroom behind a thing, and um, I am one of uh, the 1% of theater practitioners who had never any interest at all in being on the stage. Um, and so I just leave you with that as I get started. Um, so uh, I was telling my uh, colleagues this morning at breakfast that um, I used to live in Los Angeles for just one year from 1988 to 1989. I used to live in Silver Lake, and um, I used to ride my bike every morning to Griffith Park as exercise, and I'd get up at like you know, 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m., I'd ride my bike and then I would go to work. And uh, one morning I got up on my bike and I'm riding full steam ahead to Griffith Park and coming at me full speed ahead, you know, on the other side of the street is um, a unicorn. Um, <laughs> and it's 5.30 in the morning, I see this unicorn and I think, well, I'm, I'm having a hallucination. I'm up too early, I haven't slept well. So I finish my bike ride, I go around Griffith Park. I'm now coming this way back from Griffith Park and heading full speed ahead at me is a unicorn. Um, and I, so I see this double, uh, you know, this double moment of unicorn. And um, I think of um, uh, trying to think about living in a theater commons a lot like seeing an early morning unicorn. Um, it's one of those things that requires this kind of creative and conceptual head tilt. And um, if you kind of roll with it, even though you don't know what it means for a long time, it can be really quite magical. Um, what I learned was it wasn't actually a unicorn, of course. It was an, uh, it was an uh, African gazelle, it actually had two um, horns, but I could only see one going each way, and so um, I thought it was a unicorn. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but that said, um, I want to just, so what we're going to do is I'm going to um, uh, spend just a few minutes uh, laying out the kind of uh, conceptual philosophical framework of HowlRound. We're actually going to do another exercise um, that will give you, I hope, a deeper sense of what it is to begin to be making a commons. We're going to do like an exercise of commons making. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about some of the key ideas and learnings that we've had uh, that we hope will be useful to you as you begin to think about this field-wide um, um, uh, commitment uh, to sharing the work that you're doing. So um, I'm going to try to talk and click simultaneously. Um, our purpose, we essentially um, build, manage online communications platforms, uh, and we uh, host in-person gatherings. And the idea really of, for HowlRound came because it seemed like the theater and the, the arts more generally um, required a kind of um, secret key for entry. Uh, and as somebody, uh, David and I, when we started talking about a commons and Jamie and Vijay, we were struck by how many artists were uh, what we called standing at the gates of opportunity trying to figure out what, how you open the gate. Uh, and so the idea of um, HowlRound was really to figure out um, how we could open those gates uh, and, and get, uh, take away the mythology of how one activates and becomes a participant in the arts. Um, the, um, uh, the other reason that we came into being, our other purpose was to really demonstrate learning in real time. So uh, we had the experience, I had 15 years in, uh, of practice, that there was actually um, a lot of resources uh, in our field um, and that there was a lot of um, uh, initiatives happening, um, but often the initiatives were done, we learn about the initiatives and in final reports that went into um, a file cabinet 
and um, you know, 20 years later, somebody would say, oh, we did that 20 years ago. And so this idea of HowlRound uh, is really learning in real time and sharing in real time uh, so that um, we can um, uh, actually activate learning as it's happening. Um, slide two. So the approach we use is that we've been using this word uh, commons, and I'm going to say a little bit uh, uh, more about it. But it's really the idea of um, democratizing access uh, to the arts and um, trying to uh, use our resources effectively. The philosophy we have is one of um, that, that if we just think of this room, that there's an abundance of resources in this room that aren't uh, just money. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is unlock that abundance of resources. Uh, and you know, if you, you, for any of you who've you know, spent much time in, in, in any profession probably, but particularly the arts, um, the tendency is to talk a lot about scarcity, about there's not enough, how do you make a living, how do you survive. And so we wondered if we started to reconceptualize um, what resources actually mean and what they actually are, that um, we would be able to unlock an abundance of resources. And that was kind of the, um, the philosophy. And you know, in the arts in particular, there are a lot of highly participatory, highly educated, um, really committed people. And um, what would it be to take those, those energies uh, and um, start talking about how we could share what we have with each other. So it's really a kind of sharing mentality. Um, and we use, um, uh, we use this notion of the commons, which is a really simple notion. You probably know it from um, the, like the environmental movement, uh, the idea that um, the air belongs or should belong to everyone, um, uh, that uh, there are you know, national parks that we can all access. Um, a knowledge commons, for example, like a public library, that anybody can access a knowledge commons um, like a library. It's for the good of, uh, you know, it's resources that are for the good of the benefit of the entire community. And um, the, I, the key concept here is, which we've talked about, all, I think Jamie mentioned, is this concept of I to we. And I think this is, it, it's something that's kind of a buzzword now from I to we, but I actually think it's a really hard concept to get your head around. Uh, because it really means, moving away from simply thinking about the I of perpetuating your individual artistic practice, the I of perpetuating your individual organization, um, uh, the I even of perpetuating your individual community, um, and really um, thinking uh, in the broadest way possible about what um, your work means um, to, um, you know, uh, to the national conversation, to an international conversation, and I think um, this is um, you know, really the kind of uh, the head tilt that we talk about, this movement from I to we. And I, I ran an organization for many years. And I spent most of my time thinking about how that uh, organization would survive. And the, the real conceptual shift has been to think less about how the organization will survive and to be really thinking more about what am I doing that is a benefit to the entire community and how can I share that. And it actually means a kind of significant change of practice. Um, the, Doing this uh, would be impossible um, if we didn't use a notion uh, that we call peer production. So uh, the, the whole staff of HowlRound is essentially here. We have two other um, people who work with us uh, and do uh, editing. Um, but you're seeing the whole, uh, the whole group of us. Uh, we manage a conversation uh, every month with around 30,000 people. And the way we're able to do that is through this concept called peer production. And it's really the idea of uh, people nominate themselves to participate. And so uh, this is a, a very unusual thing in the arts. The arts is very much about uh, waiting to be nominated, waiting to be selected, waiting for somebody to pick you and say you're good enough. Peer production, you pick yourself, you say you're good enough, you say you have something to contribute, and you say you have something uh, to offer. Um, and so all of our communications platforms, which we're going to share with you after we do our little exercise, all of those platforms are co-created um, with the community um, that engages them. Uh, and so uh, we use a co-curator model. Um, and, uh, and what we find is that um, there's um, a real sense of stakeholdership with people nominating themselves, that they take it seriously, um, and that they feel a kind of investment um, because they pick themselves to participate. And so uh, uh, and, and again, this kind of goes back to um, uh, how many resources we have in our community. Peer production allows us to really access all those resources and uh, you know, many times it's um, resources that people give for free because they're just committed. Um, and so it's not, you know, we're not always having conversations about money. We're really having conversations about what do you care about and what do you want to contribute to the whole. Um, I think that's the first part. Now David is going to do. David's got the worst part of um, 
uh, this um, particular um, particular job because he has to okay. keep maneuvering you. So you go, David. I got the I got the joy of the logistics part yes. of this presentation, but I'm happy to do it. Uh, a couple of quick things to think about before you go into this breakout. What we're talking about. Uh, I was so struck by how well you guys are already thinking about this. When Josephine, where are you, uh, Ramirez? talked right away about delegates. That was like the third word out of her mouth. And that's actually one of the hardest things to, to convey is that we are not the winners of some sort of grant process and we are not the people who deem who wins. We are actually a community of delegates to this idea, right? And the other thing that's very important to think about is the word resources. We're so conditioned to think of resources as money, but in fact, the abundance is actually coming from a broad definition of resources, everything from space to expertise to training programs to dollars to uh, you name it. You could go on and on. Think broadly. Start thinking right now what resources are under your control, both personally and in your organization. What resources? And think of them, them broadly. What the exercise that we're about to do, it's really quick, it's very simple, and it's just one of saying these are the resources I have <laughs> that I could make available to the commons. And then at the same time, these are the resources that I need that I would love to find in the commons. That's it. You start a conversation based on those and you're starting to build a library of, you're starting to move from scarcity to abundance, basically, right, it, in, in a matter of moments. So when you uh, go back to your groups, what we're gonna have you do now, this is why we wanted you to set them up early, you're gonna go back to wherever that crazy breakout circle happened, into that group, and you're gonna sit and each of you share the answers to two of these, one of each, you want one of each, I think is what we're trying to get at, yeah, right? Yeah, well each group will do one. You can yeah. talk more about it, but then in the end you wanna come back and, and offer one uh, thing that you have and one thing that you need. What we're gonna end up doing is tweeting it to that hashtag, and we're gonna ask for volunteer in each breakout, uh, CP4C. We're gonna tweet to that hashtag, and by the end of the session we'll be able to see in this room what are some of the resources that are actually available to the group already, and what are some of the things this group actually needs, right? And you start to see the, the commonalities of your uh, situation. It doesn't matter what your role is in this field. It doesn't matter what your uh, place is in the country or in the, in the so relative size of your population. What do you have and what do you need will start to connect you as a community. Uh, so what we want you to do, that's all I have to do right now, right? Uh, that's all you have to do. Yes. Great, so what, right now, Go to your breakout groups, sit for 15 minutes, have a conversation about what we mean by resources, what you have to share, and then decide which thing you want to, you have and which thing you need. We'll come around and help.
So we're going to wrap up. I hope everyone's had a chance to introduce their, their project. We're going to wrap up and tweet. Um, if, you, if your group doesn't have someone comfortable to tweet it, let us know. We can help. Uh, you're, it's too hard to tweet one of each, so two or three of each is all right. Uh, and the, you have the hashtag. Go ahead and tweet those. And we're going to come back to the you presentation guys in a moment. We're tweeting now, so tweeting. Uh, or two if you want. If you, have, if you have two or three, that's OK. And do you have a tweeter? Great. All right. Terrific. Thank you. One thing I'd recommend if you're tweeting it is that you let your followers know at some so point we're at, we're what at it is all of a sudden time, that you're Reverend. tweeting. We're at tweet time. <laughs> so do you have a designated tweeter? You guys are somebody to do it? Yes? Do you need our help? You got it. Yeah, one person can tweet one or two haves and needs. So is there someone who has an account? You do? You can do it? And did you get the art place C3? It's um, C, the hold hashtag. on, let me make sure I get it right. The hashtag is CP, the number four, and C. Yeah, C3, no. CP, Creative Placemaking for Commons. CP4C. Okay. CP4C. CP hashtag art place, hashtag CP4C. 4C. 4C. Yeah, it's so hard to say. I can't. I remember it. it. Yeah. No, no. Oh. Who's tweeting in this group? Okay. Can I? So it's tweet time. You guys are good. You guys are good. Oh, you got tweet. You go. Oh, yeah. Tweeter. Tweeter extraordinaire. You already did it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry that I interrupted. Neutral. Sorry Both that I interrupted. Uh, when. Uh, I would. I would recommend before you start tweeting um, these things. I would recommend before you start tweeting these things that you let your followers know that you're about to tweet an exercise so that they don't think you're asking them for things. That's a good idea. Tweet a picture of your breakout group, too. OK. So you should be tweeting at this point and coming back to the center. And then somebody else said that they have cross-sector language skills. Thank you for those of you who finished. You should be tweeting at this point and coming back to the center. Done? Great. Good work, you guys. <laughs> yeah. The hashtag is hashtag C P, the number four, the letter C. Connectors of cross sector. Yeah, I think Holly's been out there, but I'll go do it. Okay. So we're going to gather again in the theater seating. You can do it in multiple tweets. Mm -hmm. When you're done, we'll just go back into the theater seating. It's going all right, the, the tweeting part? Great, thank you. Good work, you guys. That's a good list. Good list. 
So when you're done uh, with the tweeting, come on back in and we'll keep going. Have. Need. <laughs> We're going to gather back in here when you're done with that part of the story. So, I have dental cavities, so a lot of people in the subject community want to like pull out Did you tweet it? Did you tweet it? That's good. That's a good enough. Oh, list. oh, here you have you have your Wi-Fi password. Yeah, the Wi-Fi password. Yeah. Oh, for the meeting room. Yeah. For the meeting. It's oh. just for people involved in the organizing. Yeah, so I'm covering my mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think I'll take uh, it up there with me. The, I'm yeah. guessing that it's Art Place. It's the um, login. Yep. So we're coming back to the uh, to the theater seating now. Out of the breakouts, back into the conversation, the theater style part of the room. Holly. Holly. Liz is going to be um, doing talking while we do this talk, and maybe we can aggregate it from here. Maybe she needs a recording like that. All right, come on back. Thank you. Let's get back. All right, come on back. All right, come on back. <laughs> That's all right. We're just going to the theater seat. You can leave your chair. Oh, you good. I'll go back and get them. Chairs, but we're going to go. We're coming back in. Good to see you. Yeah. I'm on mic, but I'll um, go like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I really know. <laughs> exactly. I know. You guys are crazy. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. This is so great. I know. Okay. So you've done this exercise. I just lost Polly. She went somewhere else to aggregate because Liz was going to talk. I'm coming to retrieve you. <laughs> we're back. We're back. All right. Thank you. Hi. Good. How are you? Yeah. So, Liz. No, I think Boston. I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, oh, terrific. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Really a pleasure. She's out here. How'd that go? Oh, good. I got them back there. So. <laughs> so they're going to do some logistics, uh, housekeeping stuff for a second, and we're going to aggregate the tweets. So. How many tweets was it? I don't know. How do you count? Jason Kenny. Yeah. That many. So, uh, I'm going to stand up here and do my oh so subtle job of getting people to move back into the theater portion of the seating. I'll give a minute before we start, but we don't want to take too much time. So, if you can just keep on walking back in and, and take your seat, that'd be great. I'll stare at you until you finish. Cultivate a place for. 
I think if the folks outside can hear me and start making their way back in as well, that'd be great. And the folks in the back too, now that, now that you've all made friends with people that you don't know, you can sit next to each other without the requisite seat in between. We can all huddle up and sit next to each other. If you're one of the early people, you get the joy of introducing yourself to the person next to you. <laughs> Which one, in that circle? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> like... Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And again, if you're standing in the back, we would love to have you sit down, sit back down in the theater style. We want to get back started, and so we can keep the program moving. All right, I'm, I'm starting to feel like there's a critical mass here, so I'm going to start saying things that aren't find your seat again. So if everyone who's talking could close out your conversation. Yes, yes, yes. That didn't work at all. It's okay. I might have seen you. Are we there yet? We're at the clapping point. <laughs> Okay, I just want to tell you a little bit about what we have in store tonight. It's going to be a great evening. Um, and then I'm also going to tell you a little bit about tomorrow. So I'm actually going to start with tomorrow real fast. We do have a series of plenaries and breakouts tomorrow. Uh, if you are watching from home still, um, we are going to be broadcasting all of those plenaries and breakouts throughout the day, similarly uh, to today. Um, so we're going to start at 8.30 Pacific time. Um, I'd really love it if everybody was sort of here and ready to go right at 8.30. We have a really dense session to start the day that I think is going to be really stimulating. But particularly because we have some exciting guests coming, I want to make sure that we're all ready to go right away in the morning. Um, there is going to be breakfast out here. There's a hot breakfast option, so more than just uh, pastries. Um, so please come and enjoy breakfast. There will be some tables that you can sit at in the back. Um, then uh, another thing as far as... Uh, meals tomorrow. We have lunch. Lunch will be out on the plaza. Um, for lunch, we're also going to set up some meetups, and we want you guys to come up with some of the meetup topics. We do have two topics already, I think, that have been mentioned. One is um, a rural meetup um, that I think Chris Beck, whether or not he's in the room, I think he agreed to host um, a rural meetup at lunch tomorrow. And Golgun uh, Kayim from the city of Minneapolis has agreed to host a meetup on city government. So um, if you're in city government or you have an interest in city government, please find her. There'll be um, tabletops that'll tell you where to go for that. If you have another idea for a meetup, you can tell the registration table. He'll write it down, and we'll make sure to have um, a table set aside for that. Um, and I'll announce those in the morning. So just make sure to tell registration um, tomorrow or tonight if you want to do a meetup. Um, oh, and additionally, so on Wednesday, um, as you may have seen in your program, we're doing a tour of the Arts District in LA. Really interesting point in development that it's in. There's a lot going on. For anybody who's gone outside at all, I think downtown LA is just, there's so much interesting stuff happening. And this tour is going to be led by a really dynamic guy, Tyler Stonebreaker, who's with um, a real estate company called Creative Space. And it's also going to involve a stop at the um, Southern California Institute of Architecture. Um, I know Allison is here, and I think um, Ming is here as well from SciArc. Um, and I think so, it'll, it's going to be a really great tour. If you want to come on the tour, please also just let us know so we know for numbers. Um, you can come even if you don't let us know, but we'd love if you'd let us know so that we are make sure that we're accommodating everybody. Um, uh, then uh, but, uh, on Wednesday, if you are going back to the airport and you haven't yet set your return, just keep in mind we still have the super shuttle options. Um, there's going to be a lot of people going at the same time. Um, so if you order a super shuttle around that time, I'm guessing you will be with other people from the event. Um, we'll also make sure that there's some cabs outside if, if you need to catch it quickly. Um, I'll mention that again tomorrow. 
Uh, so then we get back to today and at the end of this session where we're going to be going on a walking tour through some of the historic theaters in downtown LA and we're going to end up at the Ace Hotel. Um, and this is really exciting because the Ace Hotel just opened a few weeks ago. It's brand new. It's super hot. It's everywhere. Everybody wants to be there. It's going to be a really fun reception. Um, and I'm actually going to have Hillsman Wright, who's with the LA Historic Theater Foundation, come up and tell us just a couple um, of things about the theaters that we're going to see. And, um, and the Ace Hotel at the end. So I'm going to turn this over to Hillsman quickly. Thank you. Welcome to LA. Um, it might be of interest uh, to note that I'm appearing to you live today to make this welcome. Um, <laughs> I want to thank uh, the Art Place for giving us this opportunity to show you something wonderful. Uh, and for giving us a seat at the table for the next few days. I'm, we're going to get a lot of benefit out of this. If you haven't already picked up a brochure, um, it has pretty much the story of the theater district, what we think needs to happen, and if it looks suspiciously like a pitch, it is. <laughs> uh, a couple of things. We're going to surprise you in the next hour or so. Uh, we're going to tell you that beyond this fortress uh, exists a real downtown and we're going to take you through the second largest theater district in the United States, which is the Broadway Historic Theater District. But we need your help to do it. Um, you have conducted tours, you have been on tours, you know some of the issues involved. The main thing is that we want to get you down to the Ace Hotel to enjoy the reception as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we'll be covering about a mile between here and the Ace, uh, and we have docents in the lobby ready to depart as soon as this session is over. Uh, we do not want to be any later than 6.30 or 6.40 uh, leaving the lobby for the tour. And please don't everybody come and show up at the same time. Uh, I think that's it. I'll be around for the next couple of days to um, answer any questions you might have about the theater district. And uh, we're looking forward to showing you our hidden treasure. So um, as has been said, we're going to do the tour from out of here. At the end of the night, we have the reception from the Ace, which goes until 8 p.m., um, and then followed by a dine around. There's a number of restaurants in your program at the end um, that will um, be some good options. There's some options near the Ace. There's some options near and at the Omni. Um, we are planning to walk the mile to the Ace, and then at the end of the night, we'll depart as a group for those of you who want to come back to the hotel. We can all walk back together. If you have any concerns about walking, let me know and we'll take care of you. Um, and otherwise, I think we're ready to turn it back over. If there's uh, any questions about tomorrow, you can come and find me. Um, and if, you know, hopefully everybody who's doing something tomorrow knows what they're doing, but again, come and find me if there isn't. And I give you back to our um, esteemed leaders here in David and Polly. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. So your uh, tweets are up there. Um, and uh, we did like a kind of just a quick, um, we did a kind of quick look at them and um, immediately um, you're starting to build a kind of knowledge common. So, uh, and, and, and what we thought we'd do, we were gonna um, put them all together for you and there are some interesting synergies. There's things like um, we need somebody who uh, can talk across sectors and then there's somebody who wrote we have cross sector language skills. So you get a lot of that like one on one hits of needs and haves. Um, but we thought it would be great for you all just to um, uh, maybe identify uh, from you know a need or a have um, and just talk you know yeah, just just reflect back a little bit about the conversation you just had yep. on this on this front. So the the point of that exercise is to start to get into this notion of uh, commons and that these resources are shared. Any any resources come up that surprised you uh, on the things that you have in your group? Anybody? No surprises. We all knew what you had already. Really? <laughs> what do you have? Space. space. There was a lot of space. Yeah, a lot of people have space. What else? We have more experience. A lot of ex yeah, a lot of experience in this group. Yeah, a lot of experience. A lot of different ways at it. You can grab a mic if you have something that you'd like to, to feedback. What besides money did you need? in your group? Materials. Materials? Say more about that. Help for my cousin. 
Here, take, take, a, take the microphone. For, I'm working on the Bi'is gathering place for the Macaw tribe, and traditionally their totem poles were large diameter ancient cedar, and there are none left in the U.S. Uh -huh. It's very sad. Yeah, okay, that's going to be, we're going to all have to work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> what other needs surprise you? Grab a, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. One is in the category of trust. 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 Say more about that. Um, that's the currency that I use to access departments and department heads to introduce them to artists and arts organizations because unless they have trust, they're not going to be interested in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I need it and that, that's what I um, also have. That's a resource you can offer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other observations from that? From those uh, yes. We had... Um, Pretty, pretty unanimously wanted more time for planning, and um, probably... Raise your hand if time for planning is, is something that you feel you need. Uh -huh. And then something that probably would actually be impacted by more time for planning, creating, having a broader base and fewer silos. A broader base. How many people are living with silo problems in their project? How many people have uh, tools for dealing with silo problems in your project? Cool. Find each other over drinks. <laughs> yeah. A other observations? Yeah. Questions even about the, the exercise stuff. So we'll start here and go there. Yeah. Our group, is there one? Our group just. Can you get that one? Go, let's go here while we get that mic working. Well, one of the needs we all kind of agreed on was uh, expertise and knowledge about community development without displacement or alienation. Community development without displacement. So, so the placemaking that has people already in it, mm -hmm. right? And knows that from the beginning. How many people are dealing with uh, displacement challenges in your, in your project? How many people have tools for dealing with displacement problems in your project? Great. Okay. Uh, can I ask you guys a question also? So there is a, a kind of sharing space on the website, right, at our place right now. A lot of you are reporting in um, your work. How many of you are uh, in the habit of reading um, the updates on those other projects? And you find, uh, and talk about the value of that, if you, if you, if you have a sense of, of how that's working. The, you know, so you have. It, it excites me about this field, and it's just uh, the most wonderful. It's just the most wonderful thing. It, it excites me about the field and everybody knowing it uh, about placemaking. Mm -hmm. Let's give this one back to think, uh, Tracy, go ahead. Oh, our group um, really voted on curated partnering or matchmaking. So I, we got the point that, you know, the resources are here, but if there could be, you know, a way, a, a website, whatever. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, what, what our point here today it's not that you guys are going to become part of the HowlRound world. You're actually, we're, we're looking at, we're making this thing and it has value to a huge group of our colleagues who are working on these things as well. And our hope is that you find in it the tools, the keys for how to move where you're going now. So we're actually trying to cross a translation bridge here rather than recruit you all to the HowlRound world. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there's a microphone back here. Yeah. I think one of the unique both needs and haves that came out of the group that I was in is that there's a willingness to learn from failures or mistakes. So that, that I think was the have and the need was to really cultivate a space to talk, be able to talk about those learnings. So you just asked about and mentioned the website. Sometimes our, those online websites end up being places where we share successes and not so much failures. And I think our group really talked about wanting to have the space to, to talk about what wasn't working, what went wrong, and what yeah. can we learn from that. So but Yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. That's a challenge in this world because it is uh, sort of open to the world, um, but people are finding the way to share their learning, both the, uh, the successes and the failures, uh, in a way it, that we had not anticipated when we began. 
Uh, Olga. So um, to me, one of the biggest challenges in creative placemaking as a whole is the issue of sustainability and the fact that um, players change so much in the systems. And so um, you're constantly having to build new allies and bring new people to the table and build coalitions and then something happens and you have to start all over again. So that's hard enough to deal with in an individual project, mm -hmm. but when you're talking about building a field, um, if you don't grapple with that issue from the get-go, it's going to, um, I think, not going to, in the long run, really become part of the way people do business. And I think that um, we need, I, I really love the, the fact that um, Jamie is really um, casting this conversation as to not just we're individual grantees, but how do we join forces and create a movement? This is really what it is, it's a movement. Yeah. How do you sustain that movement? How do you grow it? How do you keep it real? One of the words that we talked about in our group was authenticity and the fact that um, there are a number of people in this, in this um, room who have built um, projects in their own communities that really feel about like they're that community, Water mm -hmm. Fire in Providence, the um, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival obviously in New Orleans. How do you scale that up so that again it becomes a movement that is a national movement? Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things is trying to figure out how to how to get the the quality of authenticity. How to identify it as a, as something that people can learn and adapt as they're building their projects. Over here, um, I, microphone, I, and then over here. I think related, but also already mentioned to a certain extent. It was really striking in our group how almost everyone felt like no matter the scale of their organization, they were having trouble either building trust with, connecting with, or communicating to a particular group. And, and that you know, at those different scales, pretty much all of, well, on one hand, all the needs um, or the haves were represented to sort of yeah. solve that, but it, it was really striking that everyone felt like they had some issue of communication um, whether that was with government officials or mm -hmm. building trust with the local community and how the scale of the organization you were often working in really, really impacted often that ability to communicate and the, the language that, we, that you were using and that these other tiers really need access to that in some way or another. Yeah. How many people are in projects where you feel like that communication trust building is actually a challenge? It's probably pretty widely shared. No? Okay, so there may be, how many people have, feel like you've got tools for that? that you could share. Good, okay. Uh, so one more and then we're gonna get, I wanna show you some of the tools. Yeah, right over here, can we get the microphone? So <laughs> They're running. <laughs> hey, thanks. Um, in our group, there was a lot of discussion around data and uh, common, da common collection of data so that uh, we would all be sort of on the same page uh, when we're communicating that. And again, again, there was that whole issue about common ways to, and very clear communications about who we are and what we do and the impact we have on the field. Because if we're gonna uh, convince um, others that we have value and that we should be, we should be a real serious player, um, we need to have a really strong communications uh, plan around that. Yeah, and I think uh, key in that, uh, you're using that word we and that word we is so key um, and making sure that as you're communicating who the we is, it's not just the winners. <laughs> it's actually the we who are in the movement. Okay, let's go look a little bit at this. One of the things that we want to show you um, is that we're actually working a, a, using a set of tools at HowlRound that have been uh, developed, defined, and evolved by the fields that we're serving. Um, and so we're going to take you through these tools uh, just as a way to trigger the ideas about what could be of value in your, in your world as you're trying to uh, build this movement. Uh, so did you want to go through it? Yeah, today? sure, I'll go through. Um, so the communication platforms that we have, uh, most of them are uh, online, but not all of them. Uh, we have a journal, we have a television channel, a new play map, uh, uh, Twitter discussions, as you've witnessed. Uh, we do in-person uh, convenings, and um, we uh, are tracking uh, residencies using a thing called Commons Producers. And we're just going to kind of run through these and leave you uh, some time for um, uh, questions as we go through it. So um, the first and uh, one of our most public facing uh, parts of what we do is an online journal. Uh, we have blog posts, we have theater criticism, uh, and then we have more in-depth essays. 
And uh, the, the way that we um, get material is people pitch ideas to us. Uh, they pitch ideas for curi curating a whole week on HowlRound. So we do, um, sometimes we do weeks on um, cities. So we've covered uh, Minneapolis, for example, had a very lively conversation about um, uh, theater in their city. Uh, we recently did a week on um, uh, race and representation, who gets to speak for uh, whom, and, uh, uh, and uh, we had one person curate that whole week. And so we have, um, the way uh, people always say, well, if you're um, uh, community sourcing your content, how do you manage to maintain a level of excellence? And the way we do that is really through um, a rigorous editing process and a, a real dialogue with all of our contributors. And so that's really where the work comes in. Uh, we're stewarding the tool for people to use it, and that's sort of our um, contribution is that rigorous editing. So. Um, next, uh, oh yes, and uh, Art Place did a blog series uh, this week, and you can find all of the blogs uh, under that um, uh, a little uh, uh, address there, bit.ly at artplace2014. And so, um, and uh, anybody can sort of come to us and say, we want to have a conversation about this, and generally we'll say, yes, how do you want to do it, and then we work with you uh, to figure out the best way um, for you to have the dialogue that matters to you. So for us, Content um, urgency comes up from the community rather than from us as the curators deciding what is urgent to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Do you want to run with the new play sure. map? Sure. So uh, we also have been involving this thing called the new play map, and I think this will take a little bit of conceptually for you guys to understand whether or not there's a value, uh, a, a different but similar approach. What we had uh, were facing was a sense in the nonprofit theater field, particularly around new work, that nobody understood how it came to be. New work really emanated from New York and then uh, got blessed by the New York Times and then went out into the world and was done by theaters all over the country, which was not how it was happening. But I worked in San Francisco, Polly worked in Minneapolis. We knew that wasn't the case, but there was nothing to prove it. So this map was actually evolved to show the history of uh, work, uh, where work came from and how it moved in the world. Now it's turned into the world. It started out just to be in the US. Um, this is actually um, a project called Metamorphosis by Vesterport in Iceland that we uh, did at Ars Emerson. Uh, and you can see it, where it started, where it's been, and how it's gone. And what that does is it creates a picture of the infrastructure of interdependent relationships. It's actually immediately clear that we're a commons. We're all relying on each other to get this work to happen. And if you look at any number of plays, that's a static snapshot. But you could look at any number of plays, uh, and you'll start to see very clearly the infrastructure for new work in this country and how distributed it is. When we did that cultural mapping uh, earlier, when we talked about, uh, you know, so yeah, there was the geographic mapping, but then there was also the what size community are you in? That kind of visibility, you can't, it, it's very hard to convince people who don't believe it that actually Art Place is already having that kind of an impact in that range of settings, uh, but a, a visual does it in a minute. So this map has been doing that. Now there's, there's thousands of plays mapped in this. And the important thing about it is it's community source. The, the playwrights, people supporting playwrights, put themselves on the map. And so if I'm, a, if I'm an organization that wants to show up in the infrastructure, I go on that map and I put in all of the relationships of, with writers that I've had and all the work that I've done for them. If I'm a playwright and I want to appear on the map, I put all my plays in and everywhere they've gone. By doing that myself, we're creating this thing. The map's doing that on its own. And it's creating the sense of the interdependence of our relationships just because people are driven to put themselves on the map. Um, HowlRound TV, you're already getting a first-hand experience with. We've had, um, on average today, 50 to 60 uh, uh, unique uh, devices watching us, which could be more than one person. But immediately, you take a room of 200, and then you're able to add 50 or 60 or 100 or 200, depending on how big those uh, watch parties are. So uh, immediately, you take a closed session or something that only some people were able to access, and um, you uh, um, allow a, a much larger group to access it. This is Susan Laurie Parks, who every um, uh, oh, about once a month or every other week or so, she does a thing called Watch Me Work as a way of uh, inspiring uh, playwrights to write plays uh, and uh, people tweeting questions to her. And uh, it really creates a sense of, for people who are sitting in uh, geographically isolated playwriting communities, it's a real sense of inspiration for them to be able to access Susan Laurie Parks and have a conversation and, uh, and, and just make a time that they write every you know, other week or so. People put themselves on TV as well. Yep. And one of the things that uh, I think is important about this that we did not know when we started out, it's creating an archive of this moment in new plays in nonprofit American theater. You could go on there, there's thousands of hours. In fact, one of the biggest moments we ever had was one of the first convenings when then the then chair of the National Endowment for the Arts 
um, who well, shall remain nameless, um, made a speech about supply and demand that we were um, broadcasting <laughs> on New Play TV, <laughs> and it wound up within hours on the art beat blog of the New York Times, and we went all <laughs> over the world. Yeah, so we have that moment. If you want to go watch it, it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but, but it's like that. that, that we, now there's this enormous archive of people who have said, I'm doing something that matters, and they've shared it, and it exists in this library. Uh, we also hold uh, weekly Twitter conversations, and uh, it, it's it just uh, people curate the conversation they want to have every uh, Thursday. We spend an hour, 100 people come join us, and we instantly have community around uh, areas of concern in the field or things that people are excited to share. Uh, we usually we have a theme every week, and, um, and again, the community curates the theme and the conversation. Um, and and that, super simple. I mean, all of this is just there's four of us, yeah. you know? So, I mean, it's not, you don't need a huge infrastructure to get any of this stuff to happen. In the convening world, um, the, the, we, we regularly gather people around uh, issues of concern, and I feel like the, the most recent convening that we had um, is really an example of how a commons can work around people uh, letting uh, their own energy bubble up and then the way that we're able to provide infrastructure. So we have a certain set of tools. In this case, um, we uh, gathered in October, November, um, the largest group of Latino theater makers since 1986 came to Boston. Um, uh, and the way that convening happened was uh, a playwright named Karen Zacharias came to us and said, I think we need a dialogue around Latino theater makers in this country. We're a growing population and we're um, not adequately represented on our stages. Uh, could we have a dialogue? And we said, sure, we can provide a space for a dialogue. That's pretty easy. Uh, and uh, I think eight people joined that original dialogue. They decided that they wanted um, to have a national conversation. And we said, well, um, there's a thing called the National Sectors Grant that the Duke Foundation has, and we could provide the infrastructure for you to apply for that. So they wrote that grant. We provide the, it provided the infrastructure. They got the grant. Um, we provided another space for them to bring a steering to committee together. The steering committee came together, and over a two-year time span, uh, they activated the largest, um, this large gathering since 1986. That group is still going. Um, they're having another uh, event here at um, uh, LA, uh, LA Theater Company. Um, they're doing another event in uh, Chicago next summer. Um, and so this whole momentum has uh, arisen, and it really started from one person saying, let's get in the room. And HowlRound's role in that has simply been to um, keep providing little pieces of infrastructure and producing expertise, and you know, we have some skills. And so, um, Interestingly, yeah. this group, uh, they had a steering committee that planned that first convening, and it was kind of the usual suspects in some ways you would think of as the leaders in the field. And then coming out of that convening, they recast the steering committee. They decided to themselves, they have a new steering committee that's now working on uh, the LA event, which is going to have 10 plays in it. So it's going to also uh, work in the art. And then there'll be a new group of people who leads toward Chicago. And in Chicago, there's going to be a new play, uh, Carnival that takes place around this whole thing. And this is all just come bubbling up out of this community. They've, they've raised uh, some money for a staff person yep. now for the, for the work of the commons work. Um, so it just, it just keeps uh, bubbling up. And one of the, the coolest things that, w that happened during that convening, so of course there's always a big question about who gets to attend and who doesn't attend. And so um, there was a lot of conversation about that and who was invited and who, uh, and then uh, what the group did was create these watch parties, and there were watch parties in five cities, and then the five cities got to have an hour of the convening where they presented their, what they were doing in their communities. And again, um, it was this incredible opportunity, it was really quite moving um, to see the energy of these various communities, and we were able to live stream them uh, and, uh, and Skype them in, and then they were able to share. And so the circle gets broader and broader, and the idea of delegate or ambassadorship is really something that is critical to all the convenings that we house. And, and I think one thing, and that actually it's also true for this. This is um, this is a picture of the resident playwrights that oh, we're yeah. tracking, and they come from the National Playwright Residency Program. A thing that's key is that those are the people who got those grants. That's the 14 of them. Those would be the winners if it wasn't a commons-based approach. Those are actually now delegates to the whole idea of resident playwrights. And there are theaters all over the country who are now working on how do we make place in our uh, organization for resident playwrights. So those are people who are working as delegates to the field. We, one would think of them as people who won a grant. And the, uh, gr the, the role that HowlRound's playing in that is that um, we have provided uh, a commons producer for every one of those uh, residencies, and that's a local person in the community who's thinking about how can the impact of those residencies be shared beyond just the I I individual institution. And so again, the commons producer is a, is a, is a person who is thinking about um, the whole of the community, not just the playwright getting a grant and the theater getting a grant. So again, how do we keep spreading the circle wider and wider to make uh, the theater feel like um, it's for everybody? Uh, and then you can.
Yeah, so Giant. the numbers. This is the month of February. 30,000 unique visitors to HowlRound from 20 countries, 178 new events added to the new play map, 14 HowlRound TV events with 12 partner organizations around the country, 2,000 hours of it watched, and 5,800 tweets on our little hashtag. That's just all from nothing, right? And it's bubbled up. And we had the same idea that you guys are having in this room right now is that there's probably more people than us who are doing this work, who could contribute to the work that we're doing, and to whom we could be contributing. And that's what's happening, is it's blowing up in that way. Uh, so, so the idea is a powerful one that you're contemplating in this conference. And that's our hope, is that you uh, take energy from that. Uh, we have a couple more things that we want to put out, and then I'd love to have a conversation. Yeah, so we're just going to do, gonna um, quick, quickly, the key ideas, which we've kind of said, the community sets the agenda. So we don't set the agenda. We don't decide, oh, we should talk about Latino theater makers. Um, the community helps us set the agenda, and we provide tools and infrastructure and stewardship. Um, uh, every participant is a stakeholder. Um, they're responsible for um, uh, being an ambassador to their community and um, sharing the information and finding a way to make the information accessible. Uh, the, um, uh, and again, our role is steward, uh, and we uh, design infrastructure. Um, the, um, uh, and then we've talked a lot about this. We unlock abundance, and um, we really uh, try to avoid talking about what we don't have and focus on what we do have. Um, and then I think the key benefits, and this is one that I talk about all the time, uh, which is that it's revelatory. You think, uh, I was a person who was working nationally in the field for many years. I thought I knew what was happening in the field, um, and I actually knew about this much of what was happening in the field. When we started doing HowlRound, um, th there was a world of activity um, that opened up that um, we could have never imagined, and it really, um, uh, it tells you um, that the key, sort of the key, our key work is listening. Um, and, and listening to what's out there and what people are already doing and uh, trying not to recreate. I think on this point, just really quickly, Jamie hit the nail on the head. When you're going to, you have 97 finalists and there were maybe 800 or 1,000 projects that had value that were in that list, uh, this unlocks the value of that. It gets it into the conversation, uh, coming at it in this, in, in this way, like a commons way. And it allows the people who get the money to be delegates toward a larger uh, event. Uh, it's an efficient use of resources. So again, um, the only way that uh, four people um, can manage um, a conversation with 30,000 every month is that um, the community steps in and um, works with us. Uh, and, and so we co-lead these projects. And that, um, so for us, one of the things we saw in the field was that there was all of this money for um, administrative infrastructure and overhead. And, um, and a, was there a way that we could free up more resources for artists by you know, using and sharing our resources more efficiently? Yes, so the HowlRound TV, we pay one license for the whole field. And it's a, and it's a license that's in, you know, it's five, it's in the $5,000 range, but that allows the entire sector to have a live stream channel to put themselves uh, in each other's homes. <laughs> uh, it, it galvanizes a community. Um, the dialogue, uh, the conversation, um, uh, people are engaged, um, and, uh, and, and there's a kind of energy when you um, have um, you know, almost 6,000 tweets in a, uh, you know, in a single month. People are, are, are in dialogue, having conversation, energized. Um, and then um, uh, this, um, one of the things that we're uh, really doing is uh, we're keeping an accessible archive of current practice. So everything that we do, um, we archive and make available. When this um, uh, when we're done with this HowlRound TV um, uh, session, it will immediately be archived and people will be able to access it. Uh, so the hardest things about this, making the head tilt, making the shift from I to we, making the shift from scarcity to abundance, that's challenging. It takes everybody to be talking about it all the time. The people who were talking here earlier today really already have it down. I was quite uh, impressed and, and delighted and, and we're gonna learn from you guys. Uh, then, then communicating that head tilt to your to the field. Right now you are already talking about there's a couple of challenges that this field has uh, in terms of perception. One of them being that creative placemaking and art place have created this community of, of privileged people. Uh, that has to be dealt with and you have to be able to talk about this shift to delegates. The other is this whole notion of uh, making projects with people in place or not and turning back toward your communities and saying I'm here and you're there, and we have a mechanism for uh, sharing our resources and our knowledge. Uh, it's hard to communicate. Uh, reversing the scarcity mindset, that moving from I to we is a challenge. Not easy. Uh, developing comfort and clarity around the curatorial role. Someone has to curate. We do curate to a degree. Uh, and uh, we edit the content in the journal, uh, and we also decide what convenings we can have. You have to get comfortable curating, but curating from a, the mindset of a commons is very different than curating from a space of picking winners and losers. 
and then tuning the infrastructure to the needs. We've been uh, evolving this thing. It's going to continue to evolve. It's a big part of what uh, Jamie and Vijay do all day, every day, is tuning this thing. Um, but it's a small staff, and tuning it allows it to ha have huge impact. I'm focusing on the small staff thing so that you guys don't feel like, oh my god, our place is going to, like, now we're going to create this whole other beast in the field. You don't need a beast, you just need uh, a, the, the concept. Uh, okay, we're going to stop there and let you ask questions about all of this, if you have any, or comments. Did we lose you? We went fast at the end. Yeah. We're a separate entity, so we have to do our own fundraising. Um, we're in the Emerson College, so we get some uh, administrative and infrastructure support from Emerson College, but um, we're not a part of the college budget per se. So we um, we operate very much like a kind of like a not-for-profit within an educational institution. But so so Howl Round is in the Office of the Arts, which yeah. reports to the president, uh, and uh, we're working. We've only been in there for uh, two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. Two years. Um, and we are, um, we are still developing the uh, integration between ourselves and the actual uh, business of the rest of the college. Um, there's also Arts Emerson is in the Office of the Arts there, and that's a presenting organization that puts the uh, international presenting in, in uh, three venues in downtown Boston. So all that stuff is growing, um, and we're evolving with it. Uh, the idea is that, that our home will matter to us. Uh, somehow we'll, we'll be fully integrated with the Emerson College uh, community as well as with this national community. Right now we're much more integrated nationally than we are in in the academic business of the college. Yeah. Here, a question about how this relates to cultural placemaking. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that for $5,000 there could be a channel, so there could be a, cult, a natural or a national cultural placemaking channel where all the mm -hmm. ideas and work and platform flowed through it. Yeah. Is that an annual fee? Yeah. Yes. Um, but know, it's, but it's just one per per uh, field, essentially. Yeah. Mainly, and I don't know if that's the number right now, but it's in that range. Uh, but what that fee does is it allows this, this, everybody to use it without commercials. And then the work that we have to do, and Vijay spends a great deal of, of his time doing it, is training the people on the other end how to create an effective stream. You know, one little uh, iPhone in the back of a, of a room full of 300 people, not going to be something anybody could watch. You know, so there is a bit of training that we do, and those skills then go out into the communities, and, the, and you watch over time, the live stream gets stronger and stronger and stronger in terms of how it's produced. Um, and also, people are learning what to put on there and what not to put on there. So you, are you actively looking to expand from theater to media to cultural placemaking to? No. OK. We're, You're not. We're not. We're okay. but, but we're suggesting that this tool is actually something that you guys might think about in terms of your own um, future as you sunset, as Art Place sunsets as a fu uh, funding organization and moves into something that's more of a movement and a and a uh, knowledge commons, it's, it's a very, been a very effective tool. Yeah. I, think, um, I have, I guess, more of a comment than a question. I, I understand the nonprofit theater world is a field and, and sort of the work that you're doing, but I think there's a, I have a sort of question for the room, which is, it seems that the basis of, we all come from such different kinds of organizations that the sort of premise of creative placemaking is that you're part of a larger conversation, mm -hmm. and that if you, focus our energy on defining it as a field. I think it's what Jamie said at the outset, you know, if someone's willing to take a meeting, you've already, sort of already won them. And really what I think the bigger opportunity, th that there's an enormous need always for knowledge exchange, whether it's interpersonal or in conferences like this, but the bigger opportunity is how in the worlds of economic development and parks and public spaces and museum directors and you name it, how the ideas that we're all working on become part of their conversation yeah. Um, yeah. rather than, you know, is this becoming a field? Because I think that by definition, we're, you know, if you look at the organizations that pay all of us, we're not really in a field the way that nonprofit theater is a field. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just sort of pose that question to the room mm -hmm. because while we love learning from other places. I learn the most from going to visit other places and, and similarly welcoming them. What I, I view as the bigger opportunity is how to move the conversation in lots of fields and bureaucracies um, that you know don't normally think of themselves as part of this conversation. So I'm just curious what other people think about that. Yeah, I was sitting here thinking about the same thing. Um, 
it strikes me that we have, you know, if you look at, at this historically, you know, we have had a lot of movements that have at the heart the same goal. We've had um, the community engagement movement and the community-based commissioned work um, kind of uh, uh, trend that was that's, that really uh, serves community and brings community together. We have creative placemaking right now in our community. We're also working with the maker movement and the way that uh, models, also models that uh, commune, that, mm -hmm. that, that commons uh, uh, and that communal activity. And it seems to me that the biggest need we have is for people to recognize the places where the common ground exists and how we have that bigger conversation about what we're all trying to do together um, and and make sure that we don't, I mean, that, that seems to me the, the really big need that communities have is get, and it really speaks to those silos we mentioned earlier. How do we get away from people looking at it as their niche and understanding that what they're doing is part of a larger community need and that there are a lot of different people trying to do the same thing and that we, we have a lot more clout together. Did you want to, did anybody want to respond? Amen. Well, I would just say, um, I don't think we need to take it so literally, like you guys have a theater commons and it's very specific, but I think if we had a really exciting conversation, whether it was on one channel or one new social media source or one new location, like if all of us brought the fields that we represent, it would be bigger than that, you know? So I don't think we need to say, are we trying to be one field? I think it is what's powerful is that we're from different fields, but we could still think about some of these tools that you guys are using. So thanks. Yeah. And I would, I would encourage you to think conceptually more than uh, tool-based. The tools came out of the, the, having communicated conceptually that where you're moving to or what, where we were moving to was the world of the knowledge common and a, and a tilt of the head that said that these resources belong to the commons, not to the individual organizations. We're gonna stop. You've been very patient with us. And uh, thank you for your energy, and uh, I'm delighted to be part of it. We're, we're around if you have questions. Since I thought I had, since I have the mic, um, just, you know, we're gonna move out here if you need to like take a moment and everything, but we, um, we'll start sending groups out essentially as